started just from the beginning from from uh, a little refreshing from what we read uh, last time and we started with the title how different they are uh, in different translations and in church slavonic the only book where we have this like special edition subtitle which sounds like this beginning of enlightenment of the soul and true, you could say, and true security deposit towards spiritual life. This is what they mean. The chapters of sanctification and prayer. This you will not find in English translation or in contemporary uh, Russian. This is only present in Church Slavonic, and I think it is not present in Greek either. Uh, because Elder Emilianos would mention about this. So it's some kind of addition in Church Slavonic. And you know, and uh, when I was uh, rereading it a few times, different translations, I think I understood what they mean. You remember, if you remember last time, we had a little confusion about the name, how in uh, English it sounds on watchfulness, and holiness and how in greek and russian it sounds that the word beneficial for the soul and salvific about vigilance and main virtue so this and main virtue i don't know i think they just made a mistake <laughs> there, there so as i understood this is how it's supposed to sound like the meaning at least of it i may be mistaken this is my interpretation so be careful uh, the word very beneficial for the soul and salvific about watchfulness and virtues word which is very important so it is not about the first virtue it is the word which is kind of first and very important if it makes sense like main first the word which should be prioritized in importance for those who wish to acquire virtues. That's like a little puzzle you, know, that, that you have to <laughs> figure out. So this word is very important for those who are searching for virtues. This was about the title. And then I will briefly go through things that we were reading last time to remind, to remind ourselves. So he started, um, his explanation, Elder Emilianos, showing us that this word, he's talking about the title, word is the way of aspiration, spiritual aspiration, both for beginners and intermediate. He said that this word will be very useful, this text, for those who just starting their spiritual life and for those who already acquired some progress then he was talking about watchfulness and he is talking about it as about ability to spiritually breathe 
with Holy Spirit. Remember? In order our soul not to die. He made this comparison that we need air for our body. If we don't breathe, no air, we die very soon. Same for soul. Soul needs spiritual air in order to live. And this spiritual air is Holy Spirit. And we remember Saint Simeon, the theologian, you remember? Death of the body. When the soul leaves the body and death of the soul, when Holy Spirit leaves the soul. This is the soul is dead without Holy Spirit. So this particular activity, which they call watchfulness, is ability to breathe with our soul, ability to be alive, and the only, the only way. Then he continued talking about watchfulness. And then we talk about it as about sobriety. Remember, in Greek and in Russian language, watchfulness is literally sobriety. So being sober, like opposite to being drunk and not control yourself. Or vigilance also. Be vigilant and sober in order to follow someone. He mentioned that it's, it's following someone and that it is purely activity of the mind. So it's a spiritual activity, uh, watchfulness. And then he started the actual texts. This was only about the um, title. It started with art versus method. We were talking how in uh, Greek it sounds that, that uh, watchfulness is the method, he says, spiritual method. And uh, in Church Slavonic, they translated it as art. And we were talking about why? Because it's more in Greek, it's also closer a little to art. It's not like method, it's not just a instructions it's not just a manual like we said but this is creative process of prayer of watchfulness and it's also having a teacher because it's following someone manual you can read by yourself but in art to learn some kind of art you need a teacher and this is this is why and creative process and co-working with someone like following someone, and this someone is God. And then he was talking about world versus God. If you remember all this, I don't know, I didn't remember, I just reread it today, like morning. <laughs> um, world versus God. You remember perishing present, like he was talking about, like you say a word, and before you finish like a last letter, it's already gone. There is no present. This time of this life is so fast passing by. Temporarily, this temporal world, world versus divine eternity. And watchfulness as a pursuit after Holy Spirit for eternity because we are looking to enter eternity through communion with God, through communion with Holy Spirit. We want to leave this temporary world, this material world. Yes, and communion with Holy, of Holy Spirit. And then creation, he was talking about creation of first man and every human being now saying that Holy Spirit is entering every soul at the moment of conception. That little baby just started its existence. It started existence because Holy Spirit gave. Mother and father gave 
like flesh and parts of their character, everything. But the but the spirit makes like a final uh, final action, final action of being a human. But um, at the time of baptism, this soul kind of makes a choice, its spiritual choice to be with God. And then um, the Holy Spirit becomes its destiny, God. And after baptism, Holy Spirit can dwell in the soul only with help of watchfulness. This is very interesting thought. I don't think we stopped on it last time, but this is where we, where we, um, where we stopped reading. We didn't talk about it. So after holy baptism, on holy baptism, we accept Holy Spirit. We kind of being reborn. But to preserve this Holy Spirit and to remain in communion with God, we can only if we can do it only if we have this watchfulness, this activity. And when it happens, remember the divine light is shining out of such soul, like this is like sparks, sparks of, of divinity. Okay, this is where we start. This is pretty like pretty intense and uh, high, uh, very high topics. Okay, let me find this place and we will continue. We will continue from here. Therefore, the vigilance is communion of Holy Spirit. And the activity and business kind of like you're doing and acquiring for us monks as apostles. For who is apostle and what is his doing? What is his business? Apostle is the one who saw God and who call, who was called by God. The one who is acting from God. And by his, by the presence of God in him is giving, sharing God with other people. This is the business, the doing of true monastic living, true monastic life. Wow. So monastic goal of monastic life especially is to acquire Holy Spirit. Why he called it apostolic? Because apostles at the day of Pentecost, how they become apostles, like really when, of course, they were cho chosen by Christ, but when they got this there, strength to go and preach when Holy Spirit ascended on them in fiery tongues on the day of Pentecost. That's when they really become apostles and started to do all these miracles and, and preach and share this grace with all the world. So this is what he says is true monastic doing, not to go someplace and preach but to acquire Holy Spirit. And then if you acquire Holy Spirit, you cannot hide it. You will be sharing it. Like, like, like Saint Seraphim. Remember, he was like shining. Matavila was seeing. And he was saying, you acquire Holy Spirit and thousands around you will be saved. That's what Saint Seraphim was saying. I think it's in line. It's, he's talking about, about this. So, the watchfulness is some inner way of communication, some way to be united and to be like one being 
with God. And it can be uh, performed, can be committed daily inside of us. When we are not occupied with empty, vain, and just random cares of this world, like when we when we get overwhelmed with cares of this world, that's it. The vigilance ends. This is why Christ says what he said, we will remember. We were talking about it today too, remembering this place from gospel. Like he literally says, do not care about tomorrow, at least. It's enough today's cares. What we think this is some kind of symbol or parable? No, this is literal commandment, like direct, clear words from the mouth of the Savior, of God. Do not care about tomorrow. Tomorrow will care about itself. What you wear, what you will eat, where you're going to live. Why? Because if we, and we are, all the world, most of the people, we just load it with these cares. And we are not with God. We, are, we, are, we cannot be with God. We will be filled with these cares, or you will be filled with God. It's one or another. So when we are not occupied with all these random uh, cares, And this lie, lies of this life, like deception of this life. Because this life seems real, but it is not. It is not real. It is not here, like he was, he was talking. It is not, there is no even like now. Like I said, now it's already past. It is all this visible reality, which we think is like the only one which we can touch. It is not true. The true reality is spiritual. True reality only in God, in eternity. So this watchfulness as spiritual art, spiritual method, if you wish, is a mystery because of which God is able to enter inside of me. And I am become able to enter inside God. Then Holy Spirit as life creating seed entering unse by unceasing movements inside of the womb of my heart. And over there, the spirit of salvation is being born as prophet says. <laughs> and now we came to so like uh, exciting, exciting place, exciting part. I'm going to talk a little bit about Bible and about different translations of the Bible. He is, this is, he's talking about prophet Isaiah. And the quote he is using is, it's a chapter 26 and verse 18. I think it worth like stopping here and read it. Because uh, to understand like the difference, because what happened, I was, I was, Interested? Okay, so what he's talking about, and I'm opening the Bible, uh, Russian Bible, contem uh, contemporary translation, and English Bible, King James. 
This is King James yes. or this? Big one, King James. Big one, okay. So I'm opening and reading chapter 26, verse 18. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. This is the verse which Elder Emilianos is talking about. Did you understand anything? Like what is it, what it's even about? This what what was it about? In Russian, so this I uh, just two words. You know that there is Masoretic, and according to seventy, uh, Septuagint, and uh, all contempt most of the contemporary translations made from Masoretic texts because they are kind of newer. They I think they found them after shortly after Christ. Uh, much later, huh? much later, much yeah. later, right? You may medieval know. rabbis, medieval rabbis. You see, and they, they used this text for some reason as more, you know, more real, more true for all these contemporary translations. But Septuagint was, you can make correct me, it's like 400 years before Christ, right? Uh, I couldn't, I, maybe 300, or maybe three, yeah. yeah, but it was 70 rabbis who were invited by the pharaoh for Alexandria library to make the first translation of uh, Old Testament, well, books of uh, Jewish books into the into Greek. And they, that there is like a different text. I don't know, like you will see, this is only one drop. If you study it and, and read these two texts, it's only, we are talking only about Old Testament because New Testament is, much better, of course. But this is like, it's like completely, he's talking about the spirit of salvation. Here, there is, he's, there is no spirit of salvation at all. <clears throat> now let's read the Septuagint. Okay, chapter 26, 18. We have been with child. We have been in pain and we have given birth. We brought forth the spirit of your salvation on the earth. Do you see? Like, it's like different things. But the inhabitants of the world shall fall. I will read this one one more time. We have been with child. We have been in pain. We have, as it were, brought forth wind. So in, we, here is the spirit of salvation, and here is wind. We have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. We have not wrought any deliverance on the earth. No, just opposite. I, it, it, yeah, opposite. it seems to me that it's just completely opposite meaning. Uh, <clears throat> neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. Uh, guys, I strongly <laughs> recommend <Burn> you. <laughs> to read, to read Septuagint, because especially if you're reading Holy Fathers, those seems like authentic old things. And this is, many things are just not clear at all, but we will go further. And I will read you Church Slavonic. Church, Church Slavonic, okay. Because we read this, this verse, why I remembered it? Because this verse is in the songs of 
old testament which we supposed to do every matins on every matins from prophet isaiah so look at this what appears here another thing which is not here at all because of your fear O oh lord why we gave birth what is talking about he is talking about fear of the lord it's not even in english translation of septuagint i don't know we don't have greek of course what you have another one yeah another septuagint translation yeah maybe for next time we for yeah. next time but we will be interesting but here what it's in church slavonic and church slavonic as you know was was uh, translated by saint cyril and Methodius, greek guys who created the language in order to do the translations of the holy uh, scriptures and they made it as a trace from greek so this is why it's kind of very interesting unique it's like a unique language which was created especially for communication with god so because of your fear O oh lord we accepted in our bosom and we were in pain and we gave birth to the spirit of salvation which we did performed on earth we will not fall but those will fall who live here on earth who live in this temporary so live this temporary life do you see how clear it is in comparison to all this fog which is even this is hard to understand to me maybe it's my problem maybe i don't know english that well but it seems like something at least they are not talking about fear of god at all here and fear of god is why we are giving birth you know father what is the english translation this yes okay. it's orthodox study bible right so it's septuagint yeah. right it's, it's, yeah yeah you're talking about the breton translation uh, okay Mother, we have questions father could you read that again the, the church slavonic yeah. translation in yes England? i yes i will read again Church Slavonic translation, they asked me to read again. Okay, this is, I'm translating like on the fly, but, but this is very clear. Because of your fear, O oh Lord, because of your fear, we accepted in our bosom, bosom, and we had some pain, like, you know, like when you give birth, and we gave birth to the spirit of your salvation. So first we had fear of God. And because of the, we had this fear, we accepted inside, kind of like a, like a spiritual child. And we gave birth to the spirit of salvation, which we kind of created and this is it which we created on earth and then we will not fall but those who live on earth will fall meaning that we are already in spirit we live in our life is in heavens we will not fall those will fall who live now in now and like loaded with all the scares this is what he's talking about this is so clear, as if like Elder Emilianos is reading Church Slavonic Bible, not so not uh, not Greek. So probably Greek is very very close here. So this is still maybe this is Orthodox Bible. It's maybe based on Septuagint, but it still seems like missing some stuff. It would be very interesting to check like true Septuagint to see. It. You have it very close. I can look for here and look for here. Okay, we'll look, we'll look, and we will we will tr uh, try to go further. And if 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 we will find this book, we will take a look at another one. Okay, so you see. Oh, thank you. Okay, guys, if you have questions, feel free. You, I see somebody else wanted to.
Yeah, it's 26, uh, 18. Chapter 26, verse 18. Okay, so I, I thought this is like, very, this was very interesting, very cool. Okay. Um, you have it? I see. Okay. We will continue. That one is good. This is the, the, That's bright the bright one. Bright yeah. What is this 70? Yes, it has the Greek text to the English. It's only Old Testament. Okay, we're not gonna to do maybe the study now, but but I will take a look at it and we'll mention it next time if there will be something interesting because we kind of we will we will move forward for now. It's time. Time is flying. You see, time is so fast. This is why it is sometimes it is difficult to read church Slavonic. In Russian, we have the same problem. This is like terrible. I don't know. I, you read like Russian contemporary translation and you open Church Slavonic. That's like different, like, like opposite meaning. It is a little more difficult to read Old Testament in Church Slavonic. It's a little more kind of dark. In, some sentences in, that I even missed totally. In places, yes, yeah. yes. But 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 in but some of them are very, very clear and Okay. Okay. So we will move forward. Uh, the phrase spiritual art, Methodist pneumatiki, also reminds us about the existence of evil spirit, which died once and forever at that moment when he departed from God. And therefore, he is giving birth and bringing death to our souls. So he died first, and now he is a father of death. He is giving birth to death, and he's bringing this death in our soul like we were saying about these two ways ways way of death and way of life this evil spirit of course does not have power over creations of god but he tracks down them ambushes them in order to attack as soon as God will allow, allow it. Like it happened, like it happened with Job, right? He will talk about it. <clears throat> Only God can allow evil spirit to attack a man. How he did this in case with Job. You can look in Book of Job 1, 6, 12. The, he was coming and, you know, trying to get, trying to get God's permission. So, I'm sorry, I'll say it again because I think I missed everything. But not only God gives the right to the evil spirit, to attack a man, not only God, in how it happened in case of with Job, but also our spirit is attracting and calling for it. Negligent life. When you are being burdened, when you are rolling down to routine of daily life and like emerging it. And first of all, it's a sinful and lawless life. All these things are like invocation 
of evil spirit invitation. You kind of invite him in your life. Therefore, in the podvik, podvik, we know all this word struggle. Struggle, yeah, in English struggle, but very often <coughs> they use in English even this word. It's very like ascetical, has it in, in it ascetical struggles, <coughs> warfare. Therefore, in this struggle in Podvik of watchfulness, there is. energy of evil spirit who is tracking down you all the time so this is a part of this activity if you are approaching what he's talking about he says that if you are preparing to approach this podvik if you, this warfare this uh, divine right activity be prepared that you will meet the, this energy. The presence of evil spirit will be all, always there. Who will just wait for God allowance or your negligence to attack you. Because this evil spirit is not belong to a human nature. He can be easily casted out of a man. He he's not he does not belong there. He can be casted away from a man who spiritually performing sacred act or performing a divine service at the altar of his heart. In other words, this is what is watchfulness. This is like a sacred act, which you are performing on the altar of your heart. And altar, this, in this particular uh, word is connected to the sacrifice. I don't know, like in English, probably altar is where you make sacrifice. Because in English, I know you have altar table and preparation table. In Slavonic, it's like altar table and table of sacrifice, not preparation table. It's like place where the sacrifice is being prepared. It's like there in that word. <clears throat> Where you, where you probably, maybe he will talk about it, but what kind of sacrifice? Everything. Sacrifice everything to God in order to have him, to meet God. <clears throat> right? Christ talks about it, that you have to leave everything. Whatever you have, relatives, all your inside, and even your own soul in order to be true disciple and follow him. <clears throat> Despite this, he, this evil spirit, will not stop incontrollably attack him, this person, even, you know, even who like serving this mysterious liturgy you could say liturgy that you, each of us can serve on the altar of our heart, despite this sacred act, he will still try to attack you um, incontrollably. Therefore, this art is some kind of spiritual warfare. And this is nice parallel, right? About war, you don't say method of war. You, you, 
Do you have it in English? It's art of war. The art of war. Because if you are not creative in the war, you not you cannot just use instructions. You have to be creative, like unpredicting, unpredicting, you know, like things like this. And this is what it's about. It's a warfare, art of war. Therefore, finding ourselves between these different spirits, we must always choose our aspiration towards Holy Spirit. Of course, if we want to be victors, For as much as this art of watchfulness is subtle and delicate, same it is also dangerous. As much as it is delicate, it's also dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, it's dangerous because you are dealing, it's not just, it's real war. That you will be alive or you will be dead spiritually. Because if, if you win and acquire Holy Spirit, you will be alive. You are going to breathe the spiritual air. You will have God in yourself. If you lose, that another spirit will take over. And we will be dead. Because we read, he is the father of death. He will bring you, he will give birth to death in your soul. That's why it's also dangerous. But we say, we have a saying in Russian, whoever afraid of wolves, don't go to the forest. <laughs> if, you, if you're afraid of wolves, stay home. Um, certainly. Okay, we continue, right? What time is it? Yeah, we're good. <clears throat> certainly, this evil spirit cannot enter the depth of our spirit but when our spirit and you know when we are talking about spirit we were we were talking about this in russian group a little and i did a little research and holy fathers have this presentation of a spirit as mind as news when they talk about spirit we have to understand not always there is a little slightly different meanings to it in different places. But here, I think it's it's very close. He's talking about uh, our mind. When our spirit is occupied with something extraneous. Extraneous? Yeah. So what means if our mind is occupied with other things, it is not praying, it is not focused on God. Then Holy Spirit remain inactive. So God cannot do anything if we choose not to let him be inside of our mind. If he is not here, if we stuff our mind with thoughts of cares of this life, and, the, and of course, like, what we say, oh, we like enough wood. We don't have any hope. No, we have hope. At least start it during the prayer, your prayer room. Time that every Christian, every Orthodox Christian has for as for dedicated for prayer rule is time when you shouldn't have any alien thoughts. You shouldn't think, oh, like I'm going to, what am I going to do? My plans, like it happens often, you know. We try to read prayers, but our mind is keeps thinking about past, about future, about other people, problems, relationships, all this stuff. There is no prayer and no God. And this time is sacred, should be for us. This is time of warfare. It, Live your life as you live. The rest, you know, when you have to perform your work or daily tasks at home, but at your 
prayer room, whatever it is, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, hour, two hours. This time is belongs to God. And this is about our mind. Our mind at this time, this is the whole warfare. We have to clean it. Take a broom and just sweep. No a single thought, nothing. Only then God will be able to come. Then Holy Spirit will be able to, to act. It will be activated. <laughs> he'll, he'll become active. Otherwise, when our spirit is occupied with something extraneous, the Holy Spirit remains inactive. Here happens the same thing that very often happens in relationship between uh, people. When somebody is looking at me with great love, but I'm looking at some other thing or some other direction, and I don't have any communication with that person, that person cannot make me a partaker of his love. Yeah, it's clear. We are just don't notice it. He can stand, you know how people lift up their like trying to get your attention. He can stand with the his arm up, lift up his arm. So that as soon as like like often here with Eva, you know, we, we are like singing, singing, and I'm like standing and she's over there. She's she's a reader, so she reads service, and I'm like lifting, like trying to attra attract her attention, but she's not always getting it. So, <laughs> so, so she's praying and this, so the same thing. So as soon as I as I will look at him. He will invite me immediately so I can have communication with him. But how many times we people can do this? You know, you'll just get tired. Like you can wait a little, wait a second time, third, and then you go love someone else. Or <laughs> this is just will do something else. You know, you have other things. But here, Holy Spirit however, does this all the time. Meaning, Holy Spirit is waiting for us all the time. He, it, he is awaiting at his place, probably during all our life, waiting that and, and having kind of hope that sometime he will attract our glances of our heart towards him. That reminded me this Father uh, Ephraim. I, I, you know, there is a video on he, about him on YouTube, but it's in Russian. Oh, people ask for subtitles, but this is like so much work. And he, but he said, uh, he, he said one story. It's not in the movie even, very interesting. One time he told me, you know, one time I'm going to service. He said, he died already. God bless his soul. Um, he said, I'm going to the service. And uh, as you enter monastery on Mount Data, St. Pantelimon, there is a big ark. And you would go inside this ark. It's pretty long because it's part of the build, whole building. So you go in this like tunnel, little tunnel. And there is like store, another cell of gatekeeper. You know, like. So you go through it and then you enter monastery. It's pretty, it's like a, like a castle in a way, like medieval castle. So you go and then on the walls, there is a big icons, two big icons. Uh, in the movie, you will see then he kisses when he goes at the end. So there is icon of mother of God with Christ and icon of Saint Pantelimon. And everybody who enters, you know, venerate this icon, kiss them. So he says, one time he is going to the church and he venerates the icons. And when he kissed the little foot of the baby Christ, he hear a voice as if Christ is asking, 
him. So, Father Ephraim, how are you? How are you doing? Like <laughs> he is asking. And, and he said, wow, I got like so surprised. And I said, I am okay, Lord. I Everything is good. I am happy. I am glad with everything. I have everything I need. And then he says, and how are you? <laughs> you know, to him, and how are you? And the, and the Lord says, uh, not, not, not really, not good, he says, not good. And Father Ephraim says, why? What, what happened? He says, I'm like knocking, knocking, but nobody opens. Nobody opens, you know, meaning that, that heart, you know, I know in Russian it sounds a little more um, uh, understandable, but he means like I'm not, and he, he's doing this on Mount Athos in the monastery. Probably, as we all understood at that time, about monks. The Lord is knocking in our hearts and nobody opens. Why we don't open? Because we stop with different things. And monastery, you think very much different? It is different. Yes, people come, big long services. Everybody try to pray. But a lot of temptations of the same character, you know, like during 10 years that I was there, non-stop construction, everybody big. It was burned down. It's understandable. It probably has to be done, of course. Nobody says we should just leave it in ruins and let it be perished. But it's, in, on another hand, it's a temptation because it occupies us a lot. And many people just don't have this spiritual strength, you know, to remain in prayer. We just get emerged in this kind of, in a way, worldly life, you know, like all construction, building. I was doing like wall paintings. It's a blessing, it's a blessing, right? But very difficult to pray. And but this, but this reminded me, you see how God stands like trying to attract our attention all our life. Imagine. So that just hoping that one day with a glance of our heart, he will catch, you know, glance and then and, and enter in communion with us finally. I think maybe we can stop here today, <laughs> right? Because this is very uh, interesting place. And I, I'll put the note here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, or if any questions over there in Zoom, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask. Uh, I'm very excited about this book. This is just the beginning. There is like a lot of pages. <laughs> it's like I, I print it little by little. Um, and I hope he will talk about practical things. He will talk because you see he is talking about practical things. He's talking about prayer, how to do it, how to approach, what from our side is needed in order to uh, respond to this offer which we have from God, which is like basically he is, he is looking for us. He is going after us. And we just lost ship, ships, ships. <laughs> we are lost. We just have to let him find us. We, our, our participation is basically minimal. But for, want else. Exactly. No, not God, not exactly. God. Yes, because we want we want something else. And this is in another book we read about this. Maybe here he'll talk about this. That is our our desires, you know. We want many different things. Okay, Kira has something. Yes, Kira, you want to ask or you You, we, I can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, I have a okay. question. Um, 
Okay, so when you were talking about like going to the altar and we try to uh, not think about uh, the worldly things or entanglements and okay, uh, I will I will I will let people here know your question because they can oh. hear. Just I will oh. interrupt you. So the question is about this sacred act on the altar of your heart when you have to not have when, when we are supposed to not have any cares. Yes, yes. And um, when we have these connections, I mean, like a lot of people, we just don't even know. We don't really have a. Maybe it's more like a connection, either through our family. When um, we have a lot of connections with people, interactions. Yeah, and then how, I mean, I guess I know when Jesus says, those who do the will of, of God are my brothers, my sisters, my mother, and all that. It, I guess I'm just thinking of how hard it is to un unentangle oneself from our world yeah. how that difficult it is to disconnect how difficult it is to disconnect yeah. yourself detach from the yeah. world from all these people affairs relatives and stuff especially for yeah. people who live in the world that's right yes that's it, it is there a qu particular question in connection to this or just like you want well, some yeah, it's just so hot it's um yeah yeah, you can, you can kind of block out other stuff, maybe, but to block out those connections. Yeah. You, you, you know, by ourselves, we cannot do this. We cannot do this by ourselves. That's why God is offering his help. And, but if we have, you know, if we approach our prayer time with this knowledge, and with understanding of our goal, which is so simple in mystical marriage, he talks about it. The goal, our goal at the time of prayer should be empty your mind. Just don't have any thoughts. This is what you work on. You don't have to care about anything else because as soon as you will empty it, God will come himself. So, so our, this is all our labors and prayer is about that. And yes, it might be difficult at first, but if you approach your daily prayers every day, twice a day, right? Morning and night or whatever, whenever you do it. If you approach it every day, having this in mind, because we start our prayers even like not knowing what we are doing usually or forgetting or being occupied with other stuff right we should write with big letters yeah. in our uh, icon corner empty mind empty your mind to remind ourselves what is our goal during the prayer no thoughts only focus your attention on the words of the prayer whatever you're reading it's morning prayers evening prayers uh, the Jesus prayer is the best for this because it doesn't have thoughts in it. When we read other prayers, it's still divine thoughts. Uh, we are dealing with thoughts. And it's good to, to be tuned. But, but Jesus prayer is very important. If you And he will talk about it. If you are going to approach watchfulness, you are approaching Jesus prayer. And, and using it as a tool for emptying your mind. I think he will talk about it, but there is hope. There is, it, it may, be, may seem very difficult, but there is hope. If there would be no hope, we wouldn't have any books on it. And uh, why God, God wouldn't even try probably, if there would be no hope. But he's there, he's waiting and a lot depends on us, on us. So I hope this reading, why we read, why I read this, because it's inspiring so much. It inspires me like to approach prayer. I hope it will inspire you also and everybody who will see this 
and here, Elder Emilianos, he, he got, it seems like he got lightened, you know, as a fire, fire lightened in him, and he is sharing this fire. And you like reading, and this fire starts to burn inside of you. And just we just have to preserve this fire. Don't let it like disappear and work on it. Use it. Use it. It's like a gift. It's a gift from God. I want to try it. I want to try it, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I have idea. I have one idea. This night that came to me. Pray if I don't know if, if this is a good idea or not. I want to make a video. Nobody talks in in simple things how to do Jesus prayer. Like I mean, many people talk, but not even here. Just how to make your prostration, how to do like this, how to do what is prostration. Like basic introduction <laughs> video to Jesus prayer that you can use as a as a manual. Sure. Like yeah, like instruction in, instructions <laughs> like. Inter- introduction to this and then of course if you have this thing then you can fill it with some content which we read holy fathers and it's not that i will show something and this is the only way to do it just one of the ways of course there are, there are many many different ways but um, yeah that's all that's all this about this book the other book our coming to church If we don't meet God, if we don't acquire Holy Spirit, if we don't work at least towards this goal, it's all meaningless. It's all meaningless. What is it? Just go to church and and think that you are okay. Light a candle. Do do some good deeds. Hopefully you can be saved like, like from the fire by that too. But when there is such opportunity, I think it's a crime to miss it, to miss this. Yeah, it's like you know, monks have spiritual fathers, right? At the monasteries who teach them. Monks Jesus. have spiritual fathers at the monasteries who teach them. Jesus prayed and everything. We in in our world we don't have basic. We, and, and here in the world we don't have what I mean I, there are I, a lot of YouTube videos, but nobody really shows and I have a good news for you. Yeah. In monasteries, it's also very rare, rare thing when well, you can nowadays, find right? <laughs> nowadays. Yes, it's so you can uh, don't feel don't feel so uh, left out and uh, and bad about it. But but I believe whoever will approach this path and whoever will you know light himself with this fire. He will find guidance, don't worry. God will provide. God will provide. Like like the elder said, our Igumen, he said, I think it's Ignati Brichina for somebody, maybe somebody from fathers. Why there are no elders? Why there is no guidance? Because there is no novices, no pasushna. Nobody who will follow, nobody who will really listen. And as soon as this person appears, who is ready to listen, God will provide guidance, don't worry. Okay, thank you everyone. Hopefully we will meet next Friday and we'll continue. Let's pray. It is truly me to bless thee the Theotokos, ever blessed and most blameless and mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim and the uncomfer, more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption gave his birth to God, the who got the word, the very Theotokos did to be magnified. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, what now?
May Christ, our true God, through the intercessions of his most pure mother, our holy, venerable fathers, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and the lover of mankind. Amen. Спасибо, Господи, всем ангела, хранителя. Angel be with you.